You yep. learn more about the Raptors or the Sixers in this one? The Raptors. We know the Sixers. We, we know the issue with them. Mm -hmm. The Raptors just had the Denver Nuggets come to Toronto. And as I said before that game, you can circle on the calendar certain games, even home games, even if you're rested, that you might lose. That was one of them, a really hot Western Conference team with a great player in Jokic uh, playing really hot right now. And they lost it in a one-possession game. How do they respond? How does Kawhi, as the leader of the team, respond? Kawhi responded with a game that reminded us why I said, when everyone automatically says, KD is one of the two best players in the world coming into this year, I said, uh, -uh. A healthy Kawhi yeah. is the second best player in the game. Yeah. And the guys coming from his for his spot are the, the young guns, AD and Giannis. Mm -hmm. But a healthy Kawhi as a two-way player, we play we pay a lot of uh, 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 lip service to defense. defense and KD is yeah. a great defense player, of course. He's excellent. But Kawhi is the best defensive yeah. player in the game. He is a special all-time great defender still in his prime. And that is fully half of his value. So when we look at Kawhi and we go, oh, he can average 26 points, whatever it is a night. He can shoot the three well. He can, he can monopolize. He, he can, you can a high-usage guy who can be on the ball well, all these things. That's just half his game. Yeah. His defense is actually the extra special part of his game. And what he just showed is he can still be the best player on a championship team, mm -hmm. something he has already done in his career, a healthy Kawhi, second best player in the game. You know who else called him best two-way player in the game? Michael Jordan. Well, he probably is, but listen, I'm not sneezing at Kevin Durant, but that's a different subject for later on in the show because the numbers are similar. And last time I checked, Kevin Durant could play some defense too. Let's, let's be very, very clear. Last night was about the Sixers. Mm -hmm. We knew what we were getting from the Toronto Raptors. Basically, you have long, athletic dudes, Siakam and Anobi. Valanchunas can ball, by the way. Give him a lot of credit. Kyle Lowry, that little pit bull that goes after you. We know what he can do, and he's one of the assist, if not the assist leader in the NBA. He deserves a lot of credit. And, and of course, Kawhi is big time. I'm not knocking that. But to me, what I was watching was the Philadelphia 76ers. And I'm not pleased. Let me be very, very clear. Oh Joel Embiid is a stud. Got to learn to play with his back to the basket better. This was a problem in the postseason. This is a problem now. You got to get your butt in the hole. This man's 7'2", 7 7 7 feet 2", with major, major skills. He can ball. He got hard. He ain't scared of nobody. And he certainly knows how to talk enough trash. You go up against a big boy like Valanchunas, and all of a sudden you can't find your post game, I got a problem with that. Ben Simmons, at some point in time, rather than just saying it, we got to remind everybody, the brother can't shoot, all right? Four, six shots, just six shots, eight points. In a game against Toronto with the weapons that they have, I need more from Ben Simmons. I don't need eight points and seven turnovers from a kid that good. I know he has to work on his perimeter shot. Because I know he's not a shooter, but you got to be better than that. He's too great to, to, to give me eight points and seven rebounds. And then I'm going to look at Coach. I'm going to look at Coach Brett Brown. And I know people in Philadelphia, you know, because I got on him because he blew, he blew three playoff games, and I stand by that, damn it. The bottom line is I like Brett Brown. Yeah. Brett Brown deserves to be the head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers. I like him. I wish him nothing but the best. But I need better coaching because here's the reality. If, uh, if I've got these questions – about Joel and B. When do I get to look at the coaching? Right now, we look at J.J. Redick, who has just been steady. We look at Jimmy Butler, who's just been steady. They've been there to supplement Embiid and Ben Simmons. So guess what? They should be helping you. They shouldn't be carrying you. That th this is one game for Embiid. I get it. But you've got to take your behind down in the low post sometimes and remind them that you're 7-2 and you've been Simmons. you got to be more aggressive offensively. And Brett Brown got to make sure they do it. Ben, the, the Sixers real quick, it's going to come down to shooting. Ben Simmons is going to have to shoot and then he's going to have to learn to shoot. In other words, he's going to have to shoot in, other, in order to start knocking him down. But he could get to the hole and kick it out to Butler and Redick, though. Yeah, but... They need one more ben, piece. They when, need one more if piece. If Ben Simmons could shoot, they wouldn't need one more That's piece true. right now. That's true. I want to talk about what you say about MB with his back to the basket. You're right, but I don't think we agree why. And I want to talk about his comments, how he played like trash and everything. Um, I agree with MB. And I agree with you. But it's not because a big man must play with his back to the basket, because I think he can do that. The problem with Embiid is he shoots four threes a game. That's a ton for a seven-plus foot 
big, strong dude. In a way, he has the potential to be the most complete center ever because he shoots so many threes. He is so big. He has good footwork. He plays such good defense. He's hitting 29% from three. Guys, yeah. it doesn't cut it. Mm -hmm. And he's taken a lot of them. So the reason I think he needs to get down in the post more is because he doesn't shoot as well as he thinks he does. It's great that he's taking the shots. He's not knocking them down. He didn't knock them down great last year, around 30%. If MB was shooting 35 38% from three, he might be the best player in basketball. And that's the point, Stephen A. We're at a critical juncture, actually, in Embiid's career. He's a top 10 NBA player, right? Yeah. Because he really does affect the game. He's a tremendous player. Why, should, why isn't he the best player in basketball? And it comes down to, actually, in my opinion, the shooting. If well, he could knock it down from outside consistently, he'd be right in the conversation. Is he going to settle but, but in not the point. To, to be a top 10 player, that, or is he going to make a run that, to be that, the best that, player in the that's league? That's not the point. You're not a stretch four. You're a five. Stretch and five. Obviously, and obviously, you're a formidable defensive person. But here's the reality. When, I didn't sit up there and say he should take his behind out in the low post and ignore the rest of his repertoire. What I'm saying, that has to be added to it. Because when you do, I'm not talking about grabbing the ball, yeah. spinning, facing the basket 10, 15 feet away and trying to drive to the hole by putting it on the floor with your 7172 self. I'm talking about putting your behind on somebody posting up, drop-stepping, and taking it to the hole in that regard. Why? Because you shoot 79% from the free throw line. That means you can convert those free throws. It also means you can dictate pace, which is going to help your team, Max. Why? Because you're not that deep. So, and if you get to the foul line, you're controlling pace to some degree. You're slowing the game up just a touch. You're giving yourself a breather, your teammates a breather. You're forcing the coach not to have to look at his bench too much. He's going to rely on the top seven guys. He has, and that will make the 76ers better.